Thank you for viewing the Stanfoss Drive's extended startup video. This video will provide a closer look at setting up and commissioning a VLT FC302 automation drive. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Hi, I'm Jeff with Danfoss Drives. Today I'm going to show you a video on how to complete a basic startup for the FC302 automation drive. It's going to consist of three parts. Uh, essentially first we're going to put the drive in factory default settings. In factory default settings the drive is set up for a constant torque application with high overload, something such as a conveyor. Uh, Next, we're going to end up going through the quick setup menu that is going to consist of commonly edited parameters. In the final part of the video, I'll show you how to land the control wiring. Navigating the LCP, local control panel, and editing parameter values. The first thing you want to do is ensure that the safe torque off terminal, digital input 37, is satisfied. Digital input 37 must be connected to 24 volt control power or this drive will not operate. But most drives ship with a jumper wire between terminal 12 and 37, and if that's the case, the safety is satisfied. If that is not the case, temporarily place a jumper wire between control card terminal 12 and 37. Once the safety is satisfied, we'll want to move on to initializing the drive, which is, again, putting it in factory default settings. The easiest way to do that is to use the main menu. Pressing the main menu key two times, Use the arrow keys and scroll down to parameter group 14. Once you get to group 14, special functions, press the OK key to enter that menu and scroll down to 14-2. Press the OK key to enter that menu and you'll be at 1420 reset mode. We want to scroll down to 1422, so use the down arrow until we see 1422 operation mode. Press the OK key to initiate a change use the arrow keys until I reach the value initialization and finally press OK to accept that value. Once I've made that change I can turn the drive off. I'm going to remove AC power from the drive and when I reapply power the drive is going to power up into an alarm 80 drive initialized. I'll do that now. Turn the power back on. We're going to see the drive is an alarm, but the first thing we're going to see on the status screen is the smart setup. This is a wizard that we'll not discuss in this video. We'll do another one for that. So for now, we're going to press the back key to exit the wizard, and then OK will take you out. If we press the status key, you should see that we have an alarm 80 showing on the display, drive initialized. At this point, we can press the reset key and clear that alarm. And now we're ready to move on. The first parameter change I'll make is main menu parameter 003. So I'm going to go to the main menu using the main menu key, go to main menu group 0, enter 0 0-0 basic settings, and then scroll down to parameter 0-03 regional settings. I'm going to make the change from international to US. Press the OK key to accept that change. And now we're going to enter the quick menu. And the quick menu will scroll down to Q2 Quick Setup. Quick Setup menu. The first parameter in the quick setup will ask the language. Make the selection to the correct language and use the down arrow to move on into the list. Following parameters your motor data. The next five parameters will gather from the motor nameplate and enter them accordingly. In my example, I have a three quarter horsepower motor connected. Press the OK key to make the change. Here you can use the up and down arrow keys to select common values. Pressing the arrow key down twice for me allows me to choose 0.75 horsepower. I'll press the OK key to accept that value and again use the down arrow to move on. The next parameter is the motor voltage. 230 volt is correct. 60 hertz for the frequency is correct. The motor current. My connected motor has a nameplate amperage of 2.9 amps, so I'll use the arrow keys to adjust this value until I reach 2.9 amps. Press the OK key to accept and move on to the next parameter. Here I have my motor nominal speed. 
My nameplate speed on this motor is 1735 RPMs, so I'll enter that here. Next, we reach parameter 512 in the quick setup that allows you to adjust the function of terminal 27, which is a digital input. By default, this is an additional safety terminal. We're going to go ahead and disable the safety on 27. By doing that, press the OK key and choose the value no operation. By selecting no operation, terminal 27 has no bearing on the drive. Moving on to the next parameter, we set our minimum reference value. We're going to leave this set at zero RPMs. The next value, maximum reference, I want to open that up to 1800 RPM or essentially 60 Hertz default speeds. Now I have a minimum reference of zero RPMs with a maximum of 1800. The same thing as saying zero to 60 Hertz output frequency on this drive. Moving down, we have the ramp up time. The ramp times are defined as the time it takes to get from zero speed to motor nameplate speed, or 1735 RPMs. You can start with the defaults or adjust this to the correct value. I'll say five seconds for my application. Note that too aggressive of a ramp up or ramp down time can cause certain warnings and alarms. Moving down, I have the ramp down time, defined as the time it takes to ramp from full speed to zero speed. I'm going to set this to 10 seconds. Again, application dependent. Moving on, I have the reference site. This parameter is rarely manipulated, but it tells the drive where the speed command is coming from. By leaving it set to the default value of linked to hand slash auto, that means when someone presses the hand on button giving the drive a local start command, they will be able to adjust the speed locally on the keypad. And when the auto on is pressed and remote start stop and speed commands are provided to the drive, the speed reference signal will be remote. Now we come to parameter 129, automatic motor adaptation. Enabling the automatic motor adaptation function will cause the drive to do a fine tuning between the drive the connected cable and motor, creating a better motor model. To initiate the AMA tuning, select Enable Complete AMA and press the OK key. Now the screen will ask us to press Hand On to start the process, so we'll do that. You're going to hear the motor make, make uh, several different noises, which is normal, and we see a progress bar here telling us how far along in the process we are. All right, now once the AMA is complete, it says press OK to finish, which we'll do. It brings us to the status screen here. At this point, we need to scale our reference terminal. This video is assuming that a remote reference signal will be sent to the drive from an external device. In order to scale the drive to match the control signal, on applied to analog input 53, which again is the default reference resource on the automation drive. You go to group 6, analog in and out, and I'm going to enter that menu. Move down to analog input 1, which is otherwise known as analog input 53. Press the OK key, and here I find the four parameters associated with scaling the low and high voltage along with the low and high corresponding speeds. By default, our low voltage is 0 0.07 volts, which is essentially zero. The high voltage is 10 volts. The corresponding reference or speed values with the low voltage of 0 0.07 volts is zero RPM. And the high reference value associated with 10 volts is 1800 RPM. If you'd like to scale that differently, you can change it in these parameters here. In the case that you have a current reference signal rather than a voltage signal, we have to remove the keypad from the drive, turn the power off, and you'll see a dip switch, one for 53 and one for analog 54. They're both set to the voltage position by default. If I were to change 
analog input 53 to accept a current reference signal, I would have to carefully move the dip switch to the opposite position. Current is to the right. Now when I power the drive back on, you'll see that the software automatically reflects the change I made to the dip switch. So when I go back to the same group of parameters in group 6 to manipulate analog input 53, 6-1, I now have parameter 612, terminal 53 low current and high current rather than the voltage parameters. That's where you scale your reference. Finally, you need to land your control wiring and the drive will be ready to run. Operating the drive. After completing the quick setup, the last thing we need to do is connect the control wiring. In the default configuration, this drive is set to receive a start command on digital input 18, a reversing command on digital input 19, and a speed reference signal connected to analog input 53 in common. As our speed reference signal increases and decreases, the drive speed will change proportionally. In order to get everything to work here, particularly the reversing command, we'll first have to go to main menu parameter 410. Pressing the main menu key twice will always bring you to the top of the main menu. I'm going to find parameter 410 here in the limits and warnings group, 4-1 motor limits, and I have 410 motor speed direction. The default setting of this parameter is clockwise. If I were to give the drive a reversing command, it would ramp down to zero but would not respond by ramping up in the opposite direction because of this setting. I'm going to change this setting to the value both directions and now I'll go back to the status screen. You should notice we're in a standby state, which means the drive is ready to receive a start command. I'm going to use the I.O. simulator that is connected to this drive currently to make a contact between 12 and 18 now. You should see the drive is ramping up to the commanded reference percentage. I have a 0 to 10 volt signal connected to this drive, so we can see as I change the reference signal, the speed changes proportionally. If I give the drive a reversing command while the start command is still present, we should see it ramp down to 0 and change directions. I'm giving it the reversing command now. It's ramping down. We should notice this arrow in the upper right will show the counterclockwise direction and the drive will ramp back up in the reverse direction. Removing the start command from digital input 18 will initiate a stop command where the drive will follow my program ramp down time. I'm going to remove the start command now and you'll see that we go back to a ramping state until we reach zero speed. And now we end up back in a standby state meaning that we're waiting for the start command wiring the start command, safety input, and speed reference signal. And now we'll take a look at the physical wiring diagram. This is a schematic of the control card inputs where we'll be putting our control wiring. Like we discussed in the video, terminal 12 is 24 volt control power. We'll make a connection between terminal 12 and terminal 18 for our start contact. That should be a normally open contact. When the contact closes, it'll initiate a start command of the drive. Digital input 19 when made, we'll command the drive to reverse rotation, assuming the start command is still present. Terminal 27 is the safety contact we actually addressed in the quick setup and selected no function for. It'll have no bearing when selected to no function, and if it is left in the default setting, you'll need a normally close contact for that input. Again, in our example, since we programmed it to no operation, it has no bearing on the effect. Terminal 37 is our digital input that we had mentioned that there's a factory jumper between 12 and 37. That is your safe torque off contact. And this contact, or I'm sorry, this input is not programmable and must have 24 volt control power applied to it in order to run the drive. You can replace the jumper wire with a normally closed safety circuit if you wish. And finally, we have our speed reference command. That'll be coming from the PLC or external device controlling the uh, providing the control signal to the drive. Terminal 53 is the reference terminal where the positive wire will be connected. Terminal 55 is the common connection. And again, analog 53 is scaled via the following parameters, 610 through 615. This is where we'll set your low voltage and high voltage and corresponding low and high speed. 
Again, uh, to reiterate, if you had enabled the dip switch behind the keypad for 53 and put it in the current position, we would have parameters 612 and 613, terminal 53 low current and high current. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.